All right, all right, all right. Matt, the mortgage guy. In today's video, I want to go over a scenario where you get into contract and the appraisal comes in light. What are your options? How does it affect your down payment? How does it affect your monthly payment? I'm going to go into it because a lot of people are misinformed or they just don't really know how it affects them. I want to clear that up today with a real world example. All right, before I jump into it, if you would consider like, comment, subscribe. If this content brings you value, a mortgage broker who's working in the field all day, every day, just providing you examples, questions I get from clients and things like that, then please um, consider sharing this with somebody who you think might like it. Subscribe to the channel, like, leave a comment if you feel so inclined. All right, let me jump into this here. I have a scenario in front of me, um, real world scenario, right? And so I've got a $725,000 purchase price. And what I want to do is I want to look at um, exactly what's going to happen if it appraises at 710, if it appraises at 690. Most of the time, you get in a really competitive bidding situation where you might say, listen, it's going to take 725 to get an offer accepted on this property. I don't think it's going to appraise. We've got comps in the six. 90 range, or we've got comps up to 705, up to 710, but nothing that you think is going to allow an appraiser to appraise it for 725. So um, using this real world example, and I've got it zoomed in here, and I'll kind of <clears throat> talk through this spreadsheet and kind of show you exactly what, what it entails. Um, we'll talk about how that different appraised value is going to affect your loan options you have, right? So first bucket, 725, it appraises at 725, you're putting 20% down, you know, three and a quarter interest rate with the guesstimated uh, taxes and insurance, which are pretty accurate for, for California here. Your payment's going to be about $3,400 a month. Um, we've got this Excel spreadsheet to look exactly like a loan estimates. You've got the lender stuff in box A, which you'll notice nothing being charged from us. You got the appraisal, you've got all the title fees. In our mock-ups, in our assumptions, we just assume you pay everything as a buyer. So we've even got you paying transfer taxes and you know all the, the title and escrow fees. It won't always be the case, but just in this example, let's use that. About $157,000 cash to close. That's the 20% down plus all the closing costs, all the prepaid tax and insurance. Now, if it appraises at 710, $15,000 light. Here's the cool part. We've got a program called the MI Buster where you're going to be putting, you're going to have a loan to value of above 80%, right? And everyone's been told, oh, if you don't put down 20%, you have mortgage insurance. Not necessarily the case if you've got a program like this where it's an MI Buster. Only difference, only difference between B and C, when we're talking about um, loan scenarios, 725 appraised value, 710 appraised value, is that in this second scenario, you've got a $493 cost. It's, it's, it's less than 10 basis points um, for this same three and a quarter rate not paying mortgage insurance because it's an MI Buster product where there's no MI. Um, so you scroll all the way down, total cash to close, it literally changes by that $500-ish that, that it changes here. So um, next to it, I put what some people might consider is their only option, right? When it comes in $15,000 light, is they gotta make up the difference. Remember, you're not making up the whole 15,000, you're making up 80% of it. Um, and so the loan amount going to 568 now gives you an 80% loan to value um, on that 710 appraised value. So you got to bring in an extra 12,000. And if you scroll all the way down, that's about what hits the bottom line is extra 169 to close, $12,000 more. Since you're putting down more, 
and your loan amount is less, it's actually lowering your payment, right? It went from 3,400 in the first example to 3,346. So 12,000 more out of pocket, 54 less per month. Or like I showed in this other example, you can just pay the 493 and keep your payment exactly the same, exactly the same down payment. Okay, next question I know I always get is, what if it appraises at even lower number, right? What if it appraises at what I put here? I actually put 690 and 670. At 690, we're still under 85% loan to value, 3,400 a month, nothing changes. If it appraises well below, and I know in, in, in some parts of the country, purchase prices are gonna be lower. It might be you know 5%, 7%, 8% low on the appraised value. That's where we see a bigger difference, right? Is, is when we jump above 85% loan to value, when we're talking about the appraised value and our loan, because we're trying to keep this 580, we're trying to keep the same down payment. And this really, I built this for people that say, hey, I've only got 160,000 that I wanna to apply to this transaction. I'm not gonna put any more. I need to keep the cash to close at around 159. I'm sorry, it was 157 on the first example. So yeah, you're like, I got to keep this under 160. Even if it comes in, in this case, $55,000 light at 670, it's less than a half a point in cost to keep your rate still at three and a quarter. On this, I got to fix this. This is MI Buster. This isn't just anybody that has that program, but we've got a great program called MI Buster and you're able to keep that same rate, keep your payment the same. Again, it's 2332 more, but it's not like you're coming out of pocket the $55,000 difference, right? It's really $2,500 difference. Keeping your rate at three and a quarter, keeping the loan amount at 580, keeping your payment at 3,400, not much changes. Here's the thing, and I have this conversation day in and day out. What does change, is psychological more than anything else. You've got to be okay with, let me fix this, knowing that you paid 725,000, an appraiser who, you know, an appraiser, it's their opinion of value on that day based on the information they have. They valued it at 670,000 on that day, right? That's the bigger hurdle than the financial hurdle in most cases, right? Um, and, you know, for folks that are putting down 30% or 35%, little to nothing changes if they stay within the same bands, the same loan to value bands. And to, to simplify it, if someone goes from putting 35% down and, you know, the appraisal comes in 30,000 light and that puts them at, you know, a loan to value of 70% versus 65, nothing's going to change from our perspective as the lender, except for that sales price and appraised value are not going to match. You're going to have to be okay with that as a buyer that you're paying above that appraised value. If you're holding the real estate for a long term, if it's something that you're comfortable with on a monthly basis, I don't think that's a big deal, but I'm not the one who gets to make that decision, right? It's the buyer. It's their money they're putting up. It's their payment they're paying over the next 30 years. It's, it's ultimately your decision as the buyer. So um, hopefully this provided some insight. Obviously there's a thousand different scenarios, whether you're putting down 35%, 20%, 10% on how this is gonna affect you. This one really applies to someone putting down exactly 20%, someone who wants to avoid mortgage insurance and someone who has a fixed amount that they're willing to put towards a purchase, right? In this case, we'll call it 160,000. We saw in this example that it can appraise up to $55,000 light and still have that same monthly payment with a very small increase in what we'll call costs. Um, if it came in $15,000 light, $25,000 light, it's going to be a $500-ish cost. If it came in $55,000 light, which is pretty big, right? Um, it's going to be about a $2,300 difference, but, but that's all right. Is, uh, that, that small difference in cost, the monthly payment stays the same. The only thing is you have to get over the mental hurdle that you're paying above appraised value for a home. 
If you plan to stay there for 10, 15, 20 years, that's a very little consequence in my mind. If you're planning on selling two years from now, it might be something you have to consider um, a little bit more strongly. So hopefully that was helpful. If you've got any um, questions, I'm sure there'll be questions from this, right? Because it's 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 relatively you know convoluted and and people who are putting in offers, having to waive appraisal contingencies, have to agree to pay 20, 30, 40,000 above the appraised value. This is the kind of stuff that you want to know going into it, right? You don't want to write an offer, waive an appraisal contingency, have it come in $60,000 light and have no idea what that means to your down payment and your monthly payment. So let me know what the questions are. I'm happy to answer them. Um, hopefully this helped you. And until next time, we gonna see. <laughs>